Welcome back. Tonight, President Biden once again called on Congress to act on police reform exactly one ye month after Tyree Nichols was stopped and beaten by five officers at a traffic stop in Memphis. His parents were in the audience tonight to hear President Biden's words about their son. They were at the State of the Union as guests of chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Congressman Stephen Horsford, who joins us now. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. really appreciate it. What was your reaction to that moment tonight when President Biden called for police reform and that entire moment when he talked about Tyree Nichols? Uh, honestly, I, I'm so, I was so grateful, and I am, to President Biden, uh, to Vice President Harris. I immediately looked up to um, the First Lady's box and I wanted to hug um, Tyree Nichols' mother and father because this was their plea, that their son's death would not be in vain. In fact, his mother said he was on assignment. Mm. Think about that for a moment. A loved one who's still grieving comes to the State of the Union. Most people come to celebrate. She came as a part of the loss, but now a purpose around making sure that Congress takes action um, and that it's meaningful and that it saves other lives. And we, we're just calling for public safety and accountability, which is not a Republican or Democratic issue. It's not a black, brown or white issue. Uh, this is a public safety issue that all of us should focus on getting done. I don't want to be Pollyannish, but sometimes I think symbolism mattered. And it, I thought tonight, because Tyree's parents were there, mm. that you had a chamber that united, even for a second, mm. even for a moment in that moment. They all heard, they all heard what he said. Um, do, are you hearing anything from your friends on the other side of the aisle? Are they saying, you know what? Let, He's right. We got to do something. I mean, he didn't put any markers down. He'll take anything, which means a couple of things. James Comer came on here and said, you know, maybe we ought to have a list of bad cops. He was basically for the the, the national list. Mm -hmm. Something? What's there? What's well, possible? First, this the work that we've done around police reform, uh, accountability, and justice didn't just start now. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, months and years in the in the making. Uh, our former chair Joyce Beatty and uh, former Congresswoman, now Mayor of Los Angeles, Karen Bass, did a lot of work to lay the groundwork. And, and we are now at a moment where it's time to act. Yes, there are Republicans who I have talked with, that other members of our caucus have talked with, and the president extended an olive branch to them today. And I am as well. We know we need Republicans. Um, to get meaningful reform passed. And we're not going to just take anything. What is meaningful? I was just going to say, define that. I mean, it's because every, everybody's got a different definition. Well, it, it needs to, number one, deal with transparency, which goes to the data. For example, in Memphis, the use of force was used three times more on black residents than on white residents. The only reason we know that is because they collect da data. We need that data on 18,000 police departments across the country. We need to focus on accountability so that officers that do abuse their power can be held accountable. What that looks like, we're working on. And finally, we need to increase professional standards to improve the culture of policing. And all of us should agree that bad policing shouldn't exist anywhere in America. I, look, we're not going to play matchmaker here, but that, yeah. that didn't seem like... Yeah. It, I mean, it seems like yeah. that something can get done. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest sticking points in these negotiations has been the issue of qualified immunity, essentially protecting police officers um, from any liability if someone is killed in a police-involved incident. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to support legislation that didn't include that? Well, what I'm not, I'm not going to negotiate on TV. What I'm going to do is say to my colleagues on the other side. We of the wouldn't aisles. mind that. Actually, <laughs> you know, we got, we get James Comer over there. We can get this right. done right here if you want to. What, what, okay. what, as long as my colleagues understand, as they did tonight, that accountability, meaningful accountability, should be part of any package, yeah. then that we can make a whole lot of progress. Ultimately, George Floyd, justice and policing. We're going to continue to fight for that for as long as it takes. 
that doesn't mean we can't make progress along the way. Senator Tim Scott is seen as just being pivotal and critical to getting a bipartisan piece of legislation done on police reform. Where do you see him fitting into these latest round of talks? Has he been present? Do you think he is energized to get something done right now? I, I think Senator Scott is an honorable uh, person and is working with several of our colleagues, including Senator um, Cory Booker. I talked to several Republican members even tonight, leaving the floor uh, once I took uh, the Nichols family uh, off the gallery floor as we were leaving. Several members came up to them, uh, to, came up to her to talk. And, you know, of course they say, I'm praying for you, mm. I'm, I, I'm, I'm lifting you up. And she said, I need more than prayer. I need you all to act. Wow. And that mm, is what it's going to take. Huh? And there are so many other. We met, we had 15 guests of members from the Congressional Black Caucus sitting in that gallery tonight, all of them touched in one way by police um, incidents, some who lost a loved one, others who were traumatized by incidents. But here's the bottom line. No parent, as the president said tonight, should have to worry when their child leaves mm. as a black father of three children, I know what that feels like to worry about them when they're at the park or at the gym or getting stopped at a, during a traffic incident. That should not mean that they lose their life. And we're calling for public safety and accountability, and all of us well, should be able to stand for that. Well, you leave this conversation on a powerful point. Congressman Horsford, we really appreciate your being here. Thank you so much.